Okay, we'll start with a Mustard R43, size 10, dry fly hook. This is a three extra long hook shank. I've got some grey shear, 40 naught. And we just attach our tying thread and we go back to about there. What we need is a little bunch of moose, ma uh, moose body. These I've cleaned and stacked so the tips are even for the tail. This is my version of an Albiti pattern uh, for smaller mayflies uh, that he called the middle of May. Let me just flatten our thread and we go not too tight here. If you go too tight, you'll flare the whole tail up. So I just want to go under there now. That just locks off the thread so it doesn't lift the tail slightly so it doesn't flare the tail too much. And then we'll go back up. Over the butt ends of the moose body. Flatten my thread out again. Well, this is a, a very good pattern that uh, has worked extremely well for me for larger mayfly hatches. So we just trim off those here now, those butt ends at a slight angle so we can pull them together and go up here it's good and then we want just a little foundation so we can set the wings on so what we want now is a mallard flank a medium sized one which we prepare like this and we must remember that we trim that off there otherwise we won't get it through the uh, UV resin nozzle. So we just wet the tip like so and we place that in the nozzle and then we pull the mallard flank through like so. Just before we do this what's good is a little bit of wax. This just gives the wing a little more purchase. So we'll just place the tube on top of the hook shank there. And we make just three or four turns, hold the wing in place and then remove the tube hold the rear of the wing and then we can tighten up and go a little bit back to secure the whole thing. And we can take our, lift everything up and trim that off at an angle. Now we can go over that like so take a tiny drop of varnish or head cement just at the base like that and we can go over that again this just strengthens the whole wing and we can go back and we want to taper off this body nicely So, and then we can go forward and we can lift the wing using our nail, get it into the correct position. And then we can go in under that 
that's good. And then we can split the wing. If you've not done these before you can watch the Wally Wing technique video that shows it in detail. And we split those and then we take the centre stem and remove that and we can position our wings I like to force these into position and I use a, a clamp for that well, it's not a clamp it's a Cotarelli hackle plier. This just puts the wings right for me. What we want is these wings to go slightly back. There we are. That's good. That will do us just fine. Then we can trim off the end fibres. We can trim the wing, if the wing's a little bit too long we can trim those down afterwards. So then we can go back here with the tying thread and just work our way back to about there. And we have three moose mane, two brown, one black and we just want to catch these three hairs in here, try and keep them close together, Let's flatten that thread and we'll go back right into the tail base, not too tight again because you'll flare the moose mane if you do, the moose body hair for the tail sorry. And we can go back up here, keeping a nice taper on the body as we go, up into the thorax, and we can take our moose mane, get that first turn in. segmented body, keep the hairs parallel the whole time, don't twist them and you can see how the body is changing colour very subtly as we approach the thorax, gives a very realistic body. Go up. off now. Like so. Move our time thread forward just to lock it off and then I can remove those. Okay, I just want a little foundation at the front there of tying thread and I go ways back and then on the back of the wings. I've got a medium brown uh, dun hackle which I'll tie in 
just behind the wings and we've got up here like so trim that off there now, all I want to do is just bend that up so I can get it under the wings without messing with the wings too much I can trim that off to size tie that down just to secure it that's good and then I can wrap the hackle place this behind the wings one more turn in under there I think I can get and then we can come forward and we make two or three four turns there and then I can tie that off we can get rid of that don't worry about any uh, wild hackle fibers right now and I've cleaned and stacked a little bunch of nicely marked deer hair we just measure this I want this just about the same length as the wings so we'll hold that in position there and we'll go twice around loosely and then we tighten up again through the hair and then we can pull the hair back spin around there but that will tighten up as I go forward I'm using 40 naught tying thread so I don't put too much pressure on this deer hair but I should get enough that I can get it to sit pull that back finisher then I'll take just a little drop of varnish just on there I can get everything back Let's make a few turns One more we whip finish in like that, and we can remove that. And what I can do is just give the hair and the hackle a wee brush. Try not to destroy your wing. Just like that, and we take our little cutter. We try and pull the wings out the way. To form a muddle ahead. And then under on the under the side. off the whole thing <laughs> my scissors for the last bit want to trim all that hackle off
So we can just take a light up and singe the deer hair to finish it off. Remove the soot and that's the finished Muddler May. If you enjoy the videos please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.